Hey, Central Coast, this is Scott Van Pelt. You're listening to Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy here on ESPN Radio 1280. You're my friend over here, don't you? Sure, sure. How you doing? Okay, right, right, okay. What, are we waiting for these guys? Hey, Whitey, where's your hat? Go while we're young. Into the woods, a hundred bucks. I Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slice. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you can owe me. You ever seen I owe you nothing. Have you ever seen that movie, Mike? <laughs> I owe you nothing. You have, have you ever seen that movie? I should I use that it. line in when you? we play. Yeah, I have the, the titanium. <laughs> the the, the plutonium. <laughs> titanium. Plutonium. Titanium. Mix. Yeah. You have I've it. upgraded over the years. I started out with the gold or the <laughs> silver, and, and then I then got up to the, the get, I went bronze, silver, yeah, gold. Now then you went to the titanium. Titanium, platinum. <laughs> so you have the platinum edition. That's yeah. awesome. Welcome to the Halloween show. Once a year, we get to share our, our our wonderful stories. We call them facts and disfigures of golf-related accidents, injuries, and deaths. And um, I'm not sure where to start. I could share. I was telling. I don't know if if Nikki wants you to since it's your show and you're the. I mean, we're voted in producer. I heard since I left. So congratulations to that. Um, <laughs> should uh, should I share my last month's experience, or should we go back to my golf stories and your golf stories? And no, there's like, nothing better than <laughs> what you've gone through. So. <laughs> Anything I had read, I wouldn't even <laughs> think of mentioning. Yeah, but it's not really golf related. Really. Ever happened to a golf pro? Yeah, so, but it's probably yeah. it probably some of it's due to to being in golf as long as well, you have. Well, during the break, you know? I tried to explain that I knew that there was you know, you know an important surgery. I just had no idea how serious it was going to be, and I really had no idea of the after effects, the post surgery issues, and. Um, it, it, it was, and I, I'll just get to some bullets. That night after the surgery, I actually coded. I, you know, like they say code blue, where they bring in the rapid response team. Mm-hmm. Um, the damage from the as, 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 anesthetics, the aste- what do you call it? Anesthesia. 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 Yeah, they, yeah, that's the they had that they pumped stuff down in your throat and they put the pipes down in there or whatever they do. It was trying to come back out, but it was so damaged it wouldn't come out. So the pressure started to build up. Had the same symptoms of a heart attack. And then the pain in my neck was so excruciating, and they asked if I wanted. So my blood pressure, I started into a panic mode. I knew it wasn't a heart attack. I could tell personally, but they, they thought it could be because it was the exact same symptoms. Yeah. So they called in the team and got rushed Josie out. She's crying. It was brutal. Man. She's going out there, and, they, and I'm freaking out. They bring in the tent. They're pumping you all kinds of, you know, hooking you up to everything. And my heart rate was going pretty good, but yeah. my blood pressure was 200 and something over something. And one of the leaves said, I've never seen blood pressure that high if they have to do something. And before so, it explodes. Because <laughs> before it explodes. So they gave me a button. They were just pumping me through medicines and whatever it could. And I could, it just, it was so painful. And they had the team. So I've never experienced that. I just want them to put me out. So why can't you just knock me out? Because that, you know, this is brutal. So yeah. TV, they just knock people out. <laughs> so of course. Just put them out. <laughs> yes. And I was screaming for that because that's what, that would have been a pleasure to just, just, you know, deal with what you got to do. But I don't want to live, you know, I don't get right. awake through this. And uh, so it was really scary having that team come in because it was just like a television show. And they were awesome. The team at the Sierra Vista Hospital were awesome. And uh, so that happened. So um, that, you know, it was, and it, they calmed it down and they, you know, they, they gave me, they've given me some severe, it's four times hard, more than morphine pain injections. Wow. Stronger than morphine. And I don't know, I've never had morphine, but this stuff did, it wasn't really cutting the pain, which is weird because they're like, this is a lot of pain meds and you're not, you know, you're still yeah. hurting here. So they're, they're, they, were, they were really worried about that. And I said, well, I'm not making it up. And, and, it, and they knew that. Um, but once they stabilized that, the, the medicine was so strong that it stopped my prostate, my prostate from working. Yeah. So then my, I started filling up my bladder and couldn't <laughs> get rid of it. So I don't know if you ever experienced it, but if you have a full bladder and you can't go, they have... St- is, this when, is this when your friend John walked in? Bruno, or? yeah. Bruno? <laughs> Bruno. <laughs> no. well, they Perfect s- name. They said we're going to have to do, use that little th- system, uh, the catheter system, to get this emptied because if you're... If your bladder uh, extends, it could be dangerous. <laughs> and I wasn't very excited about that. I don't know many guys that would be, honestly. And, I, I... and so, and the nurse, who's a sweetheart, name is Kim. She, her, she is the mom of one of my participants. Oh. And that's a little too close. And I personal, was, yeah. Right. And I'm like, I know your kids. This is just weird. So they brought in <laughs> Bruno. Bruno from downstairs, the big dude, coming in with his telephone pole. 
And what did he? What did he it say? looked a lot like that. T- that yeah. little. Uh, yeah. What did he, What did he say when you walked? We walked in. You were well, telling me about. He that. was gonna put. You know, he had to put. He had to put this. There's two of them. There's a little one you can put in just empty your bladder, and it sits small, and it you know it sits uncomfortable, but it yeah. empties your bladder, and then they take it out, and then, and uh. but, and then there's one that they put in that they keep in, <laughs> because if the prostate doesn't work, you can, it, it has to keep emptying. Right? right, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm not saying this isn't so okay. Well, we got the doctor's orders, so they checked and they told he said, Yeah, you got to have the big one, it's going to stay in there. And uh, it, I don't know if anybody's out there is listening has had a catheter. I am so sorry, <laughs> I am. It is the worst. I, I won't go, it was the worst, but it's funny that there was some humor, sort of, at, not at the time. But you, you try to relax. <laughs> it was his words, <laughs> breathe, Bruno, <laughs> try, telling you try to relax. And you know, so boom, boom, and they're pushing, push, breathe, breathe, breathe. So, and you're not supposed to tighten your neck. And you know, my neck just had major surgery on it. All the muscles and everything ripped apart my neck. And you think you know, your neck isn't going to tighten up when you get a telephone pole <laughs> ramming. I mean, it was the worst, dude. I mean, I'm like, why me? I went in for neck surgery. It sounds, this like, is, sounds like a bad golf lesson. It was the it, Why don't you I'm relax? At, it was, yeah, just relax. <laughs> Come and, on, and try man, not your, your and don't stress your neck up. <laughs> don't, don't don't stress don't stress that neck. And I'm telling you one thing: this is involuntary. I'm telling you, you don't. It's not like I'm trying to be tight here, you yeah. know. And it was like four or five shoves until it gets into your bladder. Oh then they in, they insert a balloon, poof, so it stays in there, and they tape it to your leg with duct tape. Oh no! <laughs> That's so, gonna hurt when that comes off. Oh well, they said oh, it's like a band aid. <laughs> yeah. No. Did they really use duct tape? Well, no, it was tape, really, oh. but it, they said the tape coming off your leg is going to hurt more than it coming out. It does come out fast. It goes in really slow. It took a week to get it in there. And, you know, <laughs> Catheter? <laughs> so it stays in there. So mine had to stay because they weren't sure if my prostate was going to work because of the medicines for a while. And I said, no. So I actually had them call a doctor and said, we've got to get this out of here. <laughs> About six, eight hours later, it is not staying in there because anytime you move, <laughs> it's stuck to your leg and there's friction. So it's yeah. moving. And, I'm, you know, it's just it's a very sensitive <laughs> oh. moment. And I couldn't handle it. I was going to pull it out myself, man. I was, I was going, I was going MacGyver. I was, I was doing, I was Rambo, dude. It was coming out. That's why they put the little balloon because yeah. you oh, cannot take they, it out yeah. unless they, they got deflate it the balloon. Exactly. Oh, oh, you're right. They have to deflate That's, the balloon. That would have been oh. really bad. Oh, you're right. Oh, I'm getting sweaty. So they they had to call the doctor <laughs> to get permission, and the doctor yes. said, "Well, if it, it, it can come out, but if you can't go to the bathroom, you have to stay another day because it's too serious. If you can't." Can't go and I said I did the Jedi mind trick, man. I was gonna no matter what, I was gonna pee. I mean, yeah. That's it. I was gonna. So make, they took it out. I took it out, man. Just does it hurt when they take it out? <laughs> <laughs> just as bad it's, as going in? No, because it took you know it takes twenty minutes going in. It and, doesn't matter because by that time it's already shredded. It's ripped apart. Yeah, it's it's, oh. it's oh there's there's blood. It's, it's not good, man. <laughs> oh my and so, goodness. And, and then you have no control. So after it's like a little while. <laughs> <laughs> You lay in bed, something's weird. It's like awful, man. And I'm sorry to share you're this. A, you're, so, a, you're a human sprinkler system. I was for about a week. I'll go home, don't worry about it. They don't tell you that. You know? It's, I can't believe you're laughing, but it's for, I'm sorry. Did it happen man. while you're watching your shows? Like when you're watching your shows? Yeah. It just kinda, just, Did you have to wear a little raincoat? I, well, I learned quick. <laughs> I learned quick. I started, <coughs> you know, but it's so that's not really funny, but it's awful. And then, you know, to, if you have to get up, so I couldn't even get up out of the bed because the muscles in my neck and stuff. So you, you have not believe the muscles you use just to pull yourself out of bed. Sure. So when you can't, you can't physically. I was like a turtle upside down. And it was the saddest thing. So I'm flailing my arms and legs. It's like Bob. I can't get out. It's like it's awful. So that was fun. But to the just to end on the catheter story, it it's still broken. I mean, I'm not pssed anymore, but it's not good, man. It takes a while. Yeah. Your, your, your yeah. Had a, Rick, so Rick had a really bad experience. That's he super invasive. Not allow and I went in for a neck problem. And I came <laughs> out with a busted thingy. You know, was I remember it? the first time last week on the way home, I called you after the show just to <laughs> say hi and see how you were doing. And you were telling me about the whole story you just said. <laughs> it was, I, was, I was just drugged out. Was, and we just started, you and I started <laughs> laughing. And I thought that was such, such a great moment because I could imagine you <laughs> laying on the bed. <laughs> 
And they're like, oh. okay, we got to put Catherine in. Oh, and no. Like, you're laying down. You're like, no, I'm I can't do it. I'm Here comes Bruno. This. All right, we're going to do this thing. <laughs> you pull it, push it in, slap some tape on you, and you're like, I want this thing out of here. Okay. And they pull it out. Uh, and they see, Br- Bruno came in to check on it, and I already talked permission from the doctor to take it out. And he came in. I said, hey, you're taking this thing out. Doctor said it's, it can come out. No, it's, I'm saying it stays in. I said, no, the doctor said it can come out. And he thought I was just making that up. <laughs> so I said, dude, wow. take it out. Nope. You know, because he didn't know, he didn't get the order, the, the, the nurse. So they came in and said, oh, no, the doctor said it could come out. I said, I told you, now get that thing out of here. But Bruno didn't do no, it. No, the nurse, she left. Thank I, God. I think I insulted him. It's probably good that Bruno didn't do it. He <laughs> might not have deflated the balloon all the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Stop, Nikki. Yeah, I forgot. So I said, I, I, I kindly sent Mike a picture of the catheter. <laughs> didn't I say yes? You? I did send you. I photo. said thank you. <laughs> so that that's, was, that made me laugh. Yeah. That was it. Took oh it temporarily gosh. took away the the issue from the neck. So I just had to share that was my horror Halloween story. The, and then the meta the reaction from uh. the medicines. But anyways, um, that's uh, a couple of the things happened in the last month. And yesterday was the first day I, I left my house. Um, although wow. I did a couple short walks, you know, a couple little walks oh. and stuff. Um, but first time I got out in, in, into a car and moved, which is kind of fun. We are so happy you're here. <laughs> I can tell. Just, catheter stories are always common. Oh, my gosh. But uh, so, uh, anyways, that's uh, that's my, my my personal last month horror story. It's getting better. Um, definitely, it's it's it was a lot worse than they than I anticipated, but it's, it is getting better. And my humor is bad. I had no humor for two weeks. It, was, it, was, it wasn't there. I understand there. why. And I'm like, oh, no, because... Oh, and then they and they hurt my vocal cords. Not that I'm a great singer, but I do like to sing and stuff and play my guitar, and I can't because it's in it. He said, "Oh, that's pretty common. We had to go through that area of your vocal cords to get to the spot, make our little canal in there, and it could heal." It's 80, 80, 80, I guess eighty percent of the time they heal, twenty percent they don't. You'll heal. Not that you. I'm going to be yeah, you'll singing be fine. professionally. Your radio, your radio voice sounds my, good. I just can't go high, so it's interesting. Yeah. That's kind of a bummer, you know. But these are things they don't talk to you about. Yeah. You know, you didn't You'll recover him. on that. So, yeah, that, that'll so. heal. I hope so because you know I like to you know I like to jam the high notes. <laughs> yeah, of course you do, man. <laughs> so well, that's oh it. that's gosh. one act of a story. We're gonna yeah. take our second break. It's the annual Halloween show. You guys want to call and share your uh, horror horrific golf stories? Call us at eight zero five five nine five three seven seven six, and uh, you participate. We'll get you some really good prizes. And I want to thank another partner of ours, McPhee's Grill Templeton. Uh, I'll be giving away gift cards at the second hour of the show, McPhee'sGrill.com, 805 434 3204. We'll be right back. Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy right here on ESPN Radio.